Welcome to a world that's often overlooked, yet it's essential to life on Earth. This is the realm of fungi, a diverse and mysterious kingdom that's neither plant nor animal. Each fungus begins with a cell, a eukaryotic cell with a complex structure. Starting with a cell wall, fungi are primarily made of chitin, a strong but flexible polysaccharide. Chitin is also found in the exoskeletons of arthropods, such as insects, spiders, and crustaceans. The cell wall is different from the cell wall of plants, which are primarily made of cellulose. The unique structure of the fungal cell wall is one of the features that helps scientists distinguish fungi from other kingdoms. Looking at the fungal cell, one can see many common organelles, such as the nucleus, which has DNA, which contains the cell's genetic material and coordinates cellular activities such as growth, metabolism, protein synthesis, and cellular division. The nucleolus is a distinct region within the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. Mitochondria, which is a site for cellular respiration, making ATP from glucose and oxygen. Ribosomes, which is the site of protein synthesis. Vacuole, which serves as a storage site for important nutrients such as amino acids, uh, ions, and other compounds. The vacuole can also store waste products until the cell can dispose of them too. Cell membrane, which is a semi-permeable membrane that encloses the cell and controls the movement of substances in and out of the cell. Endoplasmic reticulum, which is a network of membrane tubules and sacs. The ER has a rough side that has ribosomes and a smooth side that lack ribosomes and is involved in lipid synthesis. Lysosomes contain digestive enzymes and break down waste materials and cellular debris. Golgi apparatus, which are flattened membrane sacs that modify, sort, and package proteins and lipids for storage or transport out of the cell. Vesicles transport materials within the cell and can also move substances into or out of the cell via a process known as endocytosis or exocytosis. Vesicles can also carry proteins from the Golgi apparatus to their destination, store substances, or it could even contain enzymes for metabolic processes. Peroxisomes are small bubble-like structures that help break down fats and get rid of harmful substances. They work like tiny recycling centers, converting fats into energy and making sure any toxins are made safe for the cell. Cytoplasm is a gel-like substance enclosed within the cell membrane. In fungi, a septum is a cross wall that divides the hyphae into individual cells. Lastly, the bud scar is a mark left on the surface of a yeast cell where the daughter cell has separated from the mother cell after reproduction. Now, let's zoom in on the mushroom, a familiar fungal fruiting body known as the cap. The cap is a characteristic of phylum Basidiomycota and is also the fruiting body of the fungus. The cap also bears spores on its underside in structures called gills. The annulus protects the gills during growth. The stalk stipe supports the fruiting body. The vulva, which is a remnant or leftover part to protect the gills. Mycelium is the underground network of hyphae. This mycelium is the true body of the fungus, a vast network that could cover acres and even miles of area and can live for thousands of years. Fungi can be unicellular or multicellular. Both types are eukaryotic. Now, hyphae are thread-like filaments that are formed from spores. Some fungi have hyphae with septum, which are cell walls made from chitin and separate cells from each other. Other fungi have many nuclei, but no cell separation, therefore no septum. Fungi could reproduce several ways, both asexually and sexually. An asexual method is known as fragmentation. Fragmentation often starts with a fungal hyphae or mycelium. Hyphae are the long thread-like structures that make up the body of the fungus. In this fragmentation process, the hyphae break into smaller pieces. Each fragment or piece of hyphae then starts to grow independently, developing into a new mycelium. Looking at a yeast cell, on the left-hand side of the image is a bud. The second asexual reproduction method is known as budding. A single yeast cell develops a new bud, and then will form a chain of buds, each having their own set of organelles and nuclei. Lastly, fungi can reproduce sexually. Spores are released from the fruiting body, spread by wind, water, or animals.
But fungi are more than just mushrooms. They're an entire kingdom with over 100,000 known species divided into phylum that each tell a unique story of adaptation and survival. First phylum in kingdom fungi, Chytriodiomycota. Uh, the simplest of fungi are mostly aquatic. Their spores have flagella that whip back and forth, propelling them through water. They're crucial for decomposing tough minerals in wet environments. And species within this phylum are decomposers. Zygomycota, a phylum including the fast-growing molds on breads and fruit. As a form of sexual reproduction, these fungi send up stalks that release spores into the air. And when two comparable spores meet, they form a gyrospore. Whenever you go for a loaf of bread and you see that one slice has mold on it within the bag, throw the whole bag away. Other slices might look well enough to eat, but the entire bag contains many of the spores and rhizoids already growing within the bread itself. Don't just cut off the moldy part. Like I said, just throw it all away. Glomeromycota are mostly mycorrhizal, forming symbiotic relationships with plants. These fungi extend to reach plant roots, helping with water and nutrient absorption, while the plant provides them with sugars. This is known as a mutualistic relationship. Both organisms benefit from having each other. Phylum Asomycota. This is the largest fungal phylum, and it is incredibly diverse. Morels and truffles are culinary delights. Yeast make bread, beer, and wine. Sac fungi are interesting because they could be found in a wide range of habitats, including marine, freshwater, and terrestrial ecosystems. Species in this phylum live on soil, on dead wood, as plant pathogens, and in symbiotic relationships, like leeches. Alright, imagine you have two good friends who are totally different, but decide to live together because they help each other out. That's kind of what a leechin is. It's not just one thing, it's two things living together as partners. One part of the lichen is a fungus, which is like a really tiny mushroom or mold. The other part is usually an algae or something similar to cyanobacteria, which are tiny green bacteria plants that can make food from sunlight, just like trees do. The fungus builds the house, which is the body of the lichen, and the algae is like the cook, making food from the sun's energy. This teamwork is called symbiosis, which means living together and helping each other out. Whereas, some species within this phylum, like dermatophytes, are pathogenic, like the one that causes athlete's foot. These fungi thrive in warm, moist environments, like the inside of sweaty shoes, which is why it's called athlete's foot. Symptoms of athlete's foot can include itching, stinging, and burning sensations between the toes or on the soles of the feet, peeling or cracking skin, blisters, and dryness on the sides of the feet. Athlete's foot usually is treated with antifungal medications, which can be topical, means applied to the skin, or orally taken by the mouth, depending on the severity of the infection. Basidiomycota. Uh, this phylum includes the classic mushroom shapes that dot our forest and are unique because of basidium, which are cells on the gills of mushrooms where mushroom spores are made. Spores are released from the fruiting body. These spores can be spread by wind, water, or even animals. Lastly, deuteromycota, often called the imperfect fungi. This phylum doesn't have a known sexual reproduction cycle, but they're far from unimportant. Many have significant roles in medicine, such as producing antibiotics like penicillin. Penicillium molds have given us antibiotics that have saved countless lives. Sir Alexander Fleming, a Scottish bacteriologist, discovered penicillin by accident. He was working in St. Mary's Hospital in London when he noticed that a petri dish containing Staphylococcus bacteria had been contaminated with a fungus, Penicillium nodotum. Around this contamination, Fleming observed a clear zone where the bacteria were unable to grow. Fleming identified that the mold was releasing a substance that inhibited bacterial growth. He named the substance Penicillin. Fleming published his findings in 1929, demonstrating penicillin's ability to kill a wide range of bacteria. The outbreak of World War II significantly increased the need for effective wound treatments. This Oxford team, in collaboration with American and British pharmaceutical companies, developed methods for the mass production of penicillin. By D-Day in 1944, enough penicillin has been produced to treat all the wounded allied forces. Penicillin marked the beginning of the antibiotic era. 
This discovery revolutionizes treatment of bacterial infections and has saved countless lives since its introduction. Our relationship with fungi is complex. They're in our food, our medicine, and even in and on us. Our relationship with fungi is complex. They're in our food, our medicine, and even live on us and within us. Some, like the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae, help us make beer, wine, and bread. Think of yeast like tiny little workers. One gram of yeast is approximately equal to 8 to 14 million cells. Yeast can turn simple ingredients like glucose into delicious bread. You know how we need energy to grow and develop? Well, yeast also need energy to live, and they get it through a process called fermentation. When you make bread, you mix yeast with flour, water, and sometimes a bit of sugar. The yeast loves to eat sugar, and when they do, they start to work out and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Inside, carbon dioxide gas is being produced and also a type of alcohol, which is known as ethanol. This CO2 gas is what makes the dough get all puffy and rise. Because of the CO2 gas gets trapped inside, creating little bubbles that make the bread soft and fluffy. While they're working out and making gas, the yeast also creates an environment that is a bit acidic, kind of like lemon juice, but not quite as strong. The pH of this environment is usually around 4 to 6, which is less than neutral at a pH of 7. This slightly acidic pH helps give bread a bit of a tangy flavor, and also stops bad microbes, like the following bacterial species, Bacillus, E. coli, and Staphylococcus, from moving into the dough because they don't like the acidic environment. But not all fungi are benevolent. Some cause devastating plant diseases, and others, like athlete's foot and ringworm, can affect humans. Other species of fungi, like the fungus depicted in The Last of Us, is indeed based on a real group of fungi called Ophiocordyceps, commonly known as cordyceps. One of the most famous is Ophiocordyceps unilaterally agulis, which specifically targets ants. Cordyceps fungi are known for their peculiar and rather gruesome method of reproduction. They take over the bodies of their insect hosts, eventually growing out of them and releasing spores. This behavior has earned them to be nicknamed zombie fungi. As for affecting humans, there's no need to worry. Cordyceps fungi are highly specialized and affect specific insect species, and they pose no threat to humans. Now let's take a look at how fungi kingdom is different from the plant kingdom. First, fungi are heterotrophs. Whereas plants are autotrophic, meaning they take in carbon dioxide and water, they rely on the sun's energy to create glucose and oxygen. As we have seen earlier, a fungi cell wall are made of chitin, whereas a plant cell wall is made of cellulose. Plants also have special tissues for transportation of water and nutrients. This is known as xylem and phloem. Whereas fungi bodies are a mass of filaments woven together with no distinct tissues. Remember, all fungi are heterotrophic, and heterotrophs consume food made by an autotroph. Fungi use what's known as extracellular digestion to absorb nutrients. This means that fungi will break down food molecules outside of the cell, either with the help of enzymes or mechanically. Fungi release digestive enzymes on their food, breaking down the food into smaller components, and later on, the fungi absorb the food. Fungi are living organisms, and they exhibit all eight characteristics of life. Let's go through each of them. Fungi are eukaryotic because they have multicellular bodies with a true nucleus and complex organelles. Fungi are mostly multicellular like mushrooms, but could also be unicellular like yeast. Fungi reproduce sexually and asexually, asexually through fragmentation and budding, and sexually by releasing spores. Like all living organisms, fungi have DNA which is stored in the nucleus. The genetic material is the blueprint for their structure, function, and behavior. Fungi grow by extending their hyphae, which are thread-like structures that absorb nutrients from the environment. In multicellular fungi, these hyphae form a network of mycelium. The growth process can be quite rapid under favorable conditions. Fungi require energy to grow and function. They are heterotrophs, meaning they obtain energy by absorbing nutrients from their environment. Fungi often break down organic matter, 
which they use as a food source. Fungi can show phototrophism behaviors and will grow in response to light. In addition, fungi can change the direction of their growth in response to environmental factors. Fungi maintain homeostasis by regulating the internal environment. This includes managing their rate of metabolism and adjusting their growth patterns to adapt changing environmental conditions. Fungi are highly adaptable to different environments. Fungi have evolved various mechanisms to survive in a wide range of habitats, from soil to water to living as parasites on plants and on animals. Lastly, their ability to break down complex organic compounds has allowed them to thrive in environments where other organisms simply cannot.